All right, Alicia's in Decatur, Indiana. Hi, Alicia. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Christy. Hi. Um, thanks for taking my call. Um, my husband and I are having kind of a dilemma on what to do with an inherited IRA. Um, a little backstory is we've been Dave ish for quite a while. And at the beginning of November, we decided that we were going to go full in and, you know, pay off all of our debts so we had some more freedom. Well, since then, we paid off $28,000 worth of debt. Good. And the only thing, um, well, the only thing we have left is my student loan debt. Good. So it's um, right around forty forty one thousand. And how much and was the inherited IRA? Eighty eight thousand is what it's. Sitting yes, at. pay off your student loan out of that. You're gonna have to. <laughs> you're gonna have to cash out the inherited IRA over the period of the next few years anyway. That's the law, mm -hmm. and you're gonna pay taxes on it as it comes out. No penalties. And you might as well pay your taxes now and be debt free. Yeah, it's just a security blanket for me, I guess. It's not a security it's blanket. You have a student loan debt. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. have a security blanket with an axe hanging over your head. <laughs> that's true. It's probably makes sense. So it's not very secure. You know, no. No, it's no. not. And, and, you know, be debt free. Listen, here's the thing. When you got all geared up and you paid off 28000 since November, the reason you did that was you came to believe that the shortest distance between where you are and wealth and financial stability is to get your butt out of debt, right? True. Nothing's changed. Yeah, yeah. just stay the course, take the hit. And because, not because Dave. It's not a hit. It's not a hit. It's an advancement. When you see it as a hit, you feel like you're losing money. You're taking that money and you're applying it to the debt. This is a move forward. See, we gotta we gotta reframe that in your mind. When you see that as a hit, it feels like it feels hard so to let do. Me, let me give you an, let me give you an example on this. You took the hit when you took out the student loan. When yeah, you pay it off, sure. you admit it. Yeah. When you buy a car that's thirty thousand, when you buy a car that's thirty thousand dollars and it goes down to twenty thousand dollars, and you sell it, people say, "Oh, I took the hit." No. You, you, you already got the hit. You already lost $10,000. When you sell the car, you just admit it. Yeah. That's all it is. It, it, it doesn't change, it doesn't change the reality. Long. It just fa makes you face the emotions of, this student loan was a stupid butt idea. Yeah. Well, it's okay. We've all done That's stupid it. butt stuff. <laughs> I made a living doing it, kiddo. <laughs> all right. You're going to be yeah. all right. You're doing good. I'm proud of you. You know what? The interesting term she used, security blanket, made me think of that call in the last hour where they, they had $7,500, had a debt of 10000 but didn't want to pay it off because it was that same concept of like, this makes me feel safe because I have this money here. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. And it's like the idea that that is keeping you safe and it's somehow going to be a move backwards to pay off the debt. No, no, no. That is the move forward. And you know what? That, that, that does bring up a thing, too. That this idea that the enemy of the best is not the worst yeah the enemy the best is okay kind of in the middle yeah. if you can just sit in the ugly middle and be comfortable you got no reason to bust into excellence well, you got no reason to bust into the egg and it's familiar it yeah, makes it, me think of in financial peace university which i when i took this years ago you talk about the credit cards like oh no not this last one i'm so attached to it and there's an emotional attachment we have these ideas in our head that even if they're not accurate mathematically at all about what it's going to do for us financially we get attached oh i've got to hang on to the savings even though i have all this debt and i'm paying all this interest because it makes me feel safe that's not that's but, not you know, the reality me going broke i had an advantage I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah, you were forced. I'm sitting there in the poop, and I got to go, I got to get up out of this. <laughs> right. Because there, it wasn't comfortable. Right. It, but if you're sitting there and you kind of feel comfortable, it gives you this, That that's where the enemy of the best is not the worst. I was at the worst, Yeah. and I knew it, and I didn't want to be there anymore. I, I was motivated to get my butt out of there. Right. You know, but when you're, everything's just kind of okay, it's and okay. I got my little $10,000, and I got my little eighty-eight thousand dollars, and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And and that your your brain just whines like that. Mine does it too on other things. Yeah, it's like you know, I'm not fat enough that I'm gonna die, <laughs> so I don't do anything about my fat. You know, you know what I mean. But if, but if the doc came in and went, you're you're morbidly obese, you're about to die of a heart attack, fat man. Then I would go do something about it. Sure. But my brain is like my <laughs> level okay. of fat. I'm kind of in the middle, you know. Just doing okay. Until until I hit COVID, and then I just got big as a dadgum house, and I had to go. So I've lost 37 pounds. Y'all shut up, all right? But 
because uh, I needed to because I was learning the Michelin man. But um, <laughs> But the you know but you know it's the same thing isn't it? Is any area of our okay. life if it's if you can hit that mo- that mediocre middle yep. that's a danger zone. You're comfortable. It's you're a comfortable. danger zone. And it gives you the illusion that you're doing better than you are because you've got this security blanket. Whatever your security blanket is, it's like oh I'm okay. I'm doing okay. You you don't have that motivation that you're talking about of like things are bad. I have to change something. What did you? Oh your quote I love so much. You can wander into debt. You cannot wander out. Yeah. You got to get fired up if you're gonna do something. You gotta get your. Change I mean hard. It, on anything. If you're yes. going to transform your life, it's going to involve the most painful of all emotions, and that's embracing change. Mm-hmm. Stepping face long into change mm-hmm. intentionally. I'm going to step up. I'm going to bust into this thing, and I don't care if it's, you know, your marriage is just kind of yeah, 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 instead of having an awesome marriage. You know, you got you to gotta go, something's got to give. I got to change something. You know, it's like. Man, I tell you, the kids, man, uh, you know, the kids are out of control when you go, that's it. That's it. You, you know, my mama used to say, the worm has turned. <laughs> I didn't even know what that meant, except the beatings were about to begin, you know. But the, uh, uh, turned out it was Shakespeare. Who knew mama knew Shakespeare? But, um, but, you know, all that was was she had reached the end of her rope, you know. Yeah. The little grand babies, the little girls, Denise's and Rachel's little girls were over at the house the other night, and they're jumping bed to bed to bed to bed, and I'm trying to get them in bed, and Sharon's got the boys in the other room putting them down. I'm sitting in the rocking chair, and I'm just, girls, sit down. Girls, lay down. Girls, stop it. And they're just getting more and more wound up. And one of them says, Papa Dave's getting frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Mama, mama. Get, read your she, face. Said, she said, when mama gets frustrated, it ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> so that means my daughter's doing a good job. I like that's that. Right, that's right. <laughs> so I said, girls, you're going to have to lay down. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I mean, the worm has turned. You have to have this moment in your life where you say, enough, I've had it. And sometimes being in the comfortable middle doesn't, doesn't make you do that's that. True. That's true. And you have to manufacture that in your emotions and just decide.